everybody and welcome back to Danny and Sons Real Tech Mod Pack. In this episode I got to actually I've got to find I found a bug. I think it's a bug. It seems to be. And have a look at that. And also I'll show you something else. Let's have a look at this first of all. The water wheel is frozen over. I sort of didn't really expect that, but it's still running, but very slowly. And the reason it's running is because this hasn't frozen. But the water above it and the and, and the water above that have both frozen and i think that's because of um that the exposed so let's have a go maybe i should cover it up again we'll do that first of all i need some glass if i've got some glass around which i probably have somewhere i think it'll be in this chest here nope where have i put the glass i'm sure i've got glass around well because i used Make you, uh, I'll tell you what, we'll use cobblestone, I think, in that case. Just take a stack of cobblestone and I'll replace that later on with some glass. And I think this is the reason for it. I'm to be honest with you, I'm not 100% sure. But all we'll do is we'll break the existing ice here. I'm, I'm, no, I don't want to do that just in case. If I break the existing ice and uh it doesn't melt and I'm stuck so what I'll do is either put, cover it up like this I mean if it drops the bits down the ice bits down and I don't, don't catch them it, it might cause a problem so if I could just cover it and then we can wait till at the worst case we can wait till spring and it'll, it'll thaw itself won't it but I, to be honest with you I don't know where this is going to sort it out but I could they've got two choices I can do this or I can replace the water with fresh water I think those are the two things we can do. So, but we're going to test it out. See anyway. Of course, mobs could spawn on top of this, but we'll just make sure it's completely covered, just in case. So let's see if I can get down from this thing without breaking my neck, so to speak. I'm going back and forth. Oh yes, I just made it. <laughs> so that was just going backwards and forwards. Because I got me woolly underwear on at the moment, as you can see. So let's go and put this cobblestone back in again don't need that and the other bug uh, well I think this is the bug what I've done is I set up I was worried about items not coming through here because I did I think it was six and a half stacks of iron and I only got of iron ore and I only got out of that nine stacks so I was going to test it so first of all I tested it with one stack of uh, iron clusters and I got two sets of ingots fine I took them out and then I did two and I got four sets of ingots that was fine now I've done three I've got four sets of ingots and 48 so something has happened to the rest of the iron I don't know what it is it's certainly not here in the oven and it's not in the, the machines we can go and check that so it just seems to have somehow despawned and I don't know where it could have despawned in the sorting system here it's not there long enough for it to despawn and it doesn't, yeah, it just goes straight through and comes out the other end, doesn't it? And the worst case, it would end up in here, but three stacks and six stacks, it's not going to be a problem, is it? So I don't know exactly what, what's happened to that. Uh, and I have set up some testing of this, so let's have a look what I've done for testing. I set up a, a conveyor belt and put on it a cluster. Actually, I'm getting a bit cold. Hopefully we don't... Yeah, we might get damage, but a bit <laughs> go in. And I also set up... Um, an inserter and put it one item into that as well so if we stand here for a few seconds we should get warm again let's have a look at my to-do list for today right a frozen water wheel let's have a look at that one extracting conveyor oh yes that's to do. i know what i want to do so the l key something i discovered by mistyping something and i pressed l and you basically get as advancements so advancements are sort of like quests aren't they so we've basically done return to sender i think these are achievements aren't they so return to sender is destroy a gas with a fireball and then you've got gas uneasy alliance rescue a gas from the nether bring it safely home to the overworld and then kill it and that's a challenge how do we do that <laughs> I have no idea how we do that. Uh, subspace bubble. Use another to travel seven kilometers in the overworld. Oh, okay. That's an interesting one. I've actually on the process of doing that, because if you have a look at my list here, I've got another hub. 
So let's go and have a look at that first of all. I can make sure I got the because we'll get warm in there anyway, especially with my woolly underwear. <laughs> woolly underwear I've got on at the moment. This will be quite interesting. So what I did is I moved the portal. And all I did to move the portal is I marked it on the sides and built a new one. Like this. And hopefully there are no nasty mobs around here, but there could well be. Zombie pigmen are okay, don't care about them, but down here there could be some and what I was going to do down here is I just built a tunnel and put some lights down it. I haven't put enough in by, by any standards of imagination but and here I've done this so I can actually go to the other base fairly quickly and there's a get a lot of lag in another it's dreadful I don't know what causing it I think it's the um, I think it's these climat climatization things I think they are the problem but down the bottom of this pathway, we have got the, the portal to the other base. I just tunneled it out and started to put down line, lamp. But what actually happens here is gas spawn, which is um, sort of interesting. <laughs> because you can actually get the gas, and I've got a couple of gas tiers from that already. So th just hopefully we don't see any of those, what are they called, nitro creepers. So here's the other one. So I'd made, basically move the two. So what I'm doing with the, the third one is I'm tunneling away and I'm going to go and put it where the um, ocean monument is and should end up doing that. So I haven't finished that yet, so that'll take a while. Is there anything in this chest? Oh, let's take another rack out of here, I think. I'll take that back with us. Unfortunately, I can't run in another because <laughs> it's too hot. And I did have quite a few deaths doing this, to be honest with you. I shall show you my journey map in a second. I've got climatization in. So let's have a look at my journey map. Um, let's go to the waypoints. As you can see, death, death, death. <laughs> what happens is I fell and I got a bit of lag and I got attacked by an enderman and I hit back. And unfortunately, I hit a zombie pigman and I wasn't really prepared for zombie pigman on on mass so i got killed a few times and then of course i lost my stuff so i had to go back and get it and they were still angry with me so i had to got killed again and so on and so forth a little one in the way get out of the way you let's move that close that door and go back home and then when i got home here the same thing happened to me <laughs> one of the zombie big band came through the portal and every time i got back to health he killed me again so that was that so let's have a look at that one <laughs> control set for the waypoints i got two i didn't get didn't get too badly killed in that particular one but that was definitely fun right it's night time i'll cut it here and come back in a second so that's what i'm planning to do and that'll take me three thousand blocks so seven thousand blocks is around about 900 blocks to actually travel and you'd get that achievement then that's quite an interesting thing so let's have a look at what else we've got on the list here so we've looked at the nether, the nether hub. Ah, oh, the battery box. Now that is actually interesting. I didn't know that the battery box is actually a charger. Let's just get rid of this nether rack. The battery box is actually a charger. And in here I've got some charged up ones, I think. Like this one here, swapping ones. Let's take that out of there. And you can see it's wanting to swap stuff. Let's move it out of the way. And come and put this in the battery box. Now, the battery box, I thought was just for batteries, but no, it's more useful than that. So you can put in, take the battery out of here, and you can put this into here, the bottom side, de discharges items. So you can see it's the energy from the ones get disappearing, and the top side will actually charge it back up again. So, okay, minus 500 watts. And it's run out of power. So we can leave that in there. I'm not producing much power at the moment I don't think because I made sure that this wasn't producing much power and of course the <laughs> water wheel is not producing much power either and I've got that to go into this here which will then take it into the system as a whole I think so we actually got in multiple inputs for power at the moment so let's have a look at this list again 
Now that's the battery box, and that's the L key. And then I've got cover the ovens. Well, cover the ovens was basically just putting a cover on these ovens. Let's, let's before I go and do that, let's get out of the box. Now, which one is it? I think. I think it's the one inside. The purple one. The one that was dropped. Let's take these out of here. I'll certainly take the, the vacuum bag and put that on my back. Because I've got climatization running in here. Let's have a look. It, it is actually a bit strange, the climatization. Sometimes it um, stays on for further than it should do. And sometimes it doesn't come on at all. And I think it didn't come on at all if the space is too small. So, right, cover the oven, let's go and have a look at this. Because this is a good way to keep pollution down. I wasn't sure whether it's going to work, if I can actually get that. And you see, all I did was build a big cover. <laughs> and you can see also here, you've got the, the pollution that's been collected. Now, I should be able to get up here like this. And go and vacuum up some of this pollution. So have we got that on? Yes, we have. So we just simply right-click this and we can get rid of the pollution. So at least the pollution in that case isn't going into the atmosphere as such. Which I think is a very good thing to do. And, and it does... Uh, I think that's it. I think we've got rid of all of it now. So every time you use that, it produces pollution. It doesn't produce pollution from the, the coke oven. I don't know why, but these two produce tons of pollution. So that's... That. The kiln and the blast furnace both produce tons. And I don't know if I put preheaters on this, it'll actually improve it. I'll have to test that when I get around to doing the preheaters, which will be in an episode or so, two years' time, I guess. Let's go back now and just check this list. I wanted to look at hopper ducts because you know, I set up all this complicated mechanism there for a vanilla sorting filtering system. Well, you can do the same with hopper ducts, but it's actually more complicated with hopper ducts. Let me just knock these down. We'll start from the beginning. Oops. I just knocked the post down. I didn't need... Oh, very good. <laughs> I don't think it should be doing that. Where did it go to the post? Oh, I think I've just picked it up. Yep. Um, here, isn't it? Just in front of this one. <laughs> well, that was lucky. Especially it's a multi-joint thing. Right, I'll leave the switch in here. So hopper ducks. This one here is a, gr a grated hopper, and what you can the recipe for that is fairly straightforward. It's just a hopper with a grill, uh, uh, iron bars. Look at the recipe. Iron bars and hopper produces this grated hopper. And what the grated hopper does is it allows you to filter items, but it's actually not that straightforward. So that's what I was thought I'll show you. Let's just put down a lamp and a lantern here. I can't put down a lantern there. Put it too near. Yeah. And then you can put on the grated hopper onto this. Actually I want to start at this end over here. I've got some flint in here. Let's remove that flint out of there. Um basically we'll start with hopper ducks and put those in. I'll also get my woolly jumper back on again just to make sure I'm don't freeze to death while I'm doing this. So, hopper ducks, where have they all gone to here? You can basically put these down like this. So that's the direction it's going into. And then onto here, I wanted to put the grated hopper on there, so I'm oh, still too close. Like that. So that's actually pointing at this hopper. And then in the grated hopper, the user interface is basically just items that you want to whitelist. So I wanted to whitelist flint, as in the previous example so that only flint will get passed out so only flint's going to go down into this chest and then the next problem was how do I get the other items out of there and that was where the trick became I eventually figured it out it took me about I suppose about 20 minutes to figure it out be using an ordinary hopper because of the rules from the last time I can't I'm too near I can't get it from there because of the rules for hoppers from last time a hopper even the hopper ducks, or the grated hopper ducks, if there's an item in here, it will go down, travel down there first. So if we now put into this hopper up here an iron, some iron and some flint, the iron will end up in this chest. Oh, 
probably should have moved that out of the way first, shouldn't I? So you can prove it. And the flint will end up in here. Let's do that again. It may be even better to use the ores, because that's actually what we're processing. Well, we're not really, are we? Let's try that again. So flint will go through there, and it goes through the grate and goes out to the hole, as it were. And iron and other bricks we can put in there, and they will come out. You see, flint into here. And the flint goes into there. So that would have simplified the process. So the next thing was to get stuff into this. And I was actually at the mob farm. If you remember rightly, I couldn't get the the, uh, the hopper ducks to work. I was going, why can't I get these hopper ducks to work? And actually, it's really quite simple. It's because oh, I think I need to take this. No, I think I need to take this down one here like this. Oh, yeah. oh that's right, yeah. And then we can put a hopper onto that. And then that can become then the input. So I put the chest into this one, or just put items in it. Let's just get the uh, let's get the items out again, and just to show you from the process from the beginning. We can put those into here. In fact, let's do it like this. And they'll come out. And they'll end up in here like that, and everything else. The flint will end up in this chest eventually. Wait a few seconds, and that'll be done doesn't take very long, they're all gone haven't they, so that'll already be filled up with the, those items and this will have been filled up with the flint. So that's how hot products work to filter stuff. And this one is a lever, so if I turn this lever on, do the same thing again. I won't, do, I won't take all of the items, I'll just take put just a couple in for instance. Let's put in the flint and the iron. Now that'll go along here and then it'll get stuck here. So one of these because it's got the redstone signal on this block, it's going to affect this hopper duct, so it won't go out. Uh, so you can flick it off and flick it on again. See, now we've got the iron in there, and the hopper, if we're not fast, yeah, fast enough, it got stuck on that one, and that's what was happening in the the mob chamber, or just underneath it. So I'll leave that on, off. So I was too close to this redstone signal from the from the uh, from the masher. So that's done with that one. The covering of the ovens, we've done that. And steel polishing, uh, extracting conveyor. There's another, there is the third way of doing this. Something I've not played with, so I could mess it up a bit. But if we look at immersive engineering, immersive engineering has got these extracting conveyor belts, um, which consists of some treated wood planks, some a strip curtain conveyor, and some me iron mechanical component. Now that's fairly straightforward. It's actually it's best to do in this because you can see we only use two pieces of iron. And iron seems to be disappearing on me, so I think that's a, always got to be careful with that one. So I'm going to make sure I use that one. Um, so the mechanical and we can actually do that. I think. Have we got an iron component? If we have, it'll be in the chest. Let's check it because it's not too far away. No, I don't have any components there. So we can make a component. We should have some iron plates. Ah, yes, I went and made some iron plates, I think, before I turn this off. So let's get those out. They should be in the... wherever it is. This thing. Yeah, I've got seven. Not very many, but enough. I think that's enough. Strange amount, actually, seven. Why have we only got seven? So let's iron plates of those, and so we can put two of those in one piece of copper, and that will give us a mechanical component. Fortunately, everything's in the way at the moment, so let's just click this one. So that the moment we got the wrong blueprint in there, let's get the other blueprint out of here. Take this one out of here like that. Try again. Won't come out. What's wrong with it? Ah, I've got to take this out first before I can swap it over. Oh yes, okay. Now that's something new. So one of those and two pieces of iron plates. Oh, I hope they'll work in this one. Ah, oh, they don't, of course. I have to use the immersive engineering plates. And it's night time. I'll be back in a second. I'll get those as well. Right, I'm back. So I've actually got 32 plates in there, so that was rather a lot. I can put all 32 in there and click it out. So we should be able to take the iron mechanical component out of there. 
Um, I've had to leave those in there for the time being. Probably forget where they are, but it doesn't matter very much. So the next thing in that build is conveyor belts. Now we should have some conveyor belts in this chest. If not, they're in this chest. Yes, we got. We only want one of those. And what else do we want? This strip curtain. So that's made with three iron rods and some tough fabrics. Now the iron rods are dead easy. And f I don't understand this, I will be honest with you. The iron ro rod, the recipe for that is two pieces of iron. And that will give you four ingots for the crafting bit. And the other one you can do is the same thing. You can do one piece of iron will give you two rods. So what's the point in doing it this way? It takes longer and it's it's much quicker to just simply to craft two pieces of iron together. So I might have done that already. There's a steel rods, four iron rods. Yes, I've done those already. And I've also got the tough fabric prepared as well. So we should be able to do this without any difficulty. Like that. And that gives us three curtains. So the next one, what are we missing in here? Nothing. So we can actually make the extracting conveyor belt straight away. So I don't know how this works, but I'm going to guess that we each put it down on the ground, something like this. It'll have an interface on it. No, it doesn't have an interface on it. How do I use it? Do you know, I don't know how to use it, so I'm going to have to do some research. And the next episode we'll look at that, because I really haven't prepared for this anyway. But I thought I'd make it, so at least we can. I've got one then ready to do some testing with. It mustn't be too complicated, but I'm sure it'll work that way because that would be crazy not to be able to do it that way, wouldn't it? So the next one's the steel polishing kit. I discovered by accident I made myself some steel. I think it's in here already prepared. Yes, I've got six ingots of steel. Let's go and turn this on. Um, we're going to turn it on with I'll put in one of those, and that's going to produce some steel balls for us so we're going to get some polishing kits in here like that and i was looking at polishing kits so let's have a look at the polishing kits from tinker's construct oh tinker's armor isn't it we got all of these polishing kits in here so the steel one gives a toughness of 4.5 and that was almost the best i could find there was one more and that is the sponge one, which gives us a toughness of five. But I don't know whether we, that's basically the one I'm going after. There we go, the sponge polishing kit, upgrade your armor to the materials toughness level, combined with sand. So and now we've got three of those and we got our armor. Let's go and polish them up again and see what that does to the stuff. So we need three pieces of sand In here so I've done one already I did the helmet because it was getting uh, it was getting um you see it tells me here it's been polished with steel so now let's do the leggings and polish that put those in there and three pieces of sand in there I can take out the leggings so it's blessed fire resistant polished and I've got two modifiers available for that and uh, chest plate will do the same actually it does change color it goes a bit Grey, doesn't it? Steely. And the last one must be the boots. Like that. So if we now go and put all of this armour on, take all of this off, put this on. Uh, oh, find it, that is. Where's it gone to? And the helmet, that one. So now you look at this, I've got a. Basically, I've got toughness of nine. So if we go and get a diamond now and put that on one of the, of the items, it'll actually increase the, the toughness again. I've got a feeling that I know that Danny and Sons is going to do Tinker's Armoury fairly soon. I probably he's probably already done it. I'm basically behind as is normal. So actually, I can can I take it off in here? No. Nope. Let's take it off here. So let's put a diamond on this. Does that take away a modifier? Oh, 
not enough modifiers, one needed. Okay, so let's do then. Oh, because I've got the I've got the bag in there and the knapsack, which I find very useful. I'm just about to freeze to death as well. So let's just try that on the, the leggings. We've got two modifiers on there. And I don't know what the best thing to do, but let's put the leggings into this thing. So then that gives us a nut. Now it's got a toughness of 6.5 from 4.5. So that's gone up two. So if I just do that, put those on again. Oh, so yeah, I'm just about to die. <laughs> let's go and quickly get into the heat. <laughs> Actually, I'm in the heat now, so because that should be on. So we should be all right. So we can now put these two on. Where's the other one gone to? Just Blake, wasn't it? So now I've got a full set of toughness. I don't think you can get do better than that. So that's great. So let's have a look at this board again. We've done the extracting conveyor belt which is what I was doing. So basically I've done everything I wanted to do for this episode. Let's have a look. I did that one. I ticked it off as not being done on that case. Night vision. We did find night vision. So everything I want to do for this episode, I've done. Uh, so anyway, I hope you've enjoyed it. I'll see you next time. Bye for now. I like how your arm comes out of that when you're waving. Okay.